I'm Janie Kringen, a trustee of Lyme Resource Centre, and I'll be talking about Lyme disease and how to avoid tick bites. Lyme Resource Centre is a registered Scottish charity established in 2019 by Dr John Lambert, a professor of medicine and infectious diseases from Dublin. The team includes a pharmacist, a herbalist, scientists, patients and carers, and is funded by voluntary contributions. Our mission is to raise awareness about Lyme disease and related tick-borne co-infections for the public and outdoor organisations, but also for health professionals. And we want to work with others to research ways to combat all tick-borne illnesses. We've already started developing a useful research database on our website. You can find us on our website at www.limeresourcecentre.com and on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Ticks are arachnids in the same family as spiders. They grow from eggs through to larvae to nymphs and then grow into adults. The nymph ticks are so small they're the size of a poppy seed and really hard to spot. When they feed they become engorged and their bodies blow up. Lyme disease is an infection caused by a bacteria called Borrelia. It's a spirochete, a corkscrew shaped bacteria which is a relative of syphilis. It can be transmitted via a tick or mosquito bite. Early symptoms include an expanding rash, flu-like symptoms, fatigue, nausea, headaches and muscle and joint pain. If left untreated, then late symptoms develop. These can be very varied, very severe and very debilitating. Lyme disease is often called the new great imitator because it imitates different diseases in different people. Infected ticks can be found all over the UK but they're most common in Scotland and the southwest of England. They're found in woodland and areas of long grass, but they can even be found in urban parks and gardens. You can be infected in any month, but most likely in the spring and summer. And pets can be infected as well as humans. The Big Tick and Flea Project found ticks on one in three dogs. Lyme disease is most commonly transmitted through the bite of an infected tick. Ticks give a painless bite because they inject an anaesthetic before they bite you. They then feed on your blood and become engorged. Outdoors, ticks crawl onto people from the undergrowth. They don't fly, jump or drop out of trees. Indoors, ticks arrive on pets and sometimes on mice. It's also possible to be infected at childbirth if the mother is already infected. And Borrelia has been found to survive blood bank conditions, and so there's a small chance of infection if blood is not screened. Think about protecting yourself before you go. Spray your clothes with permethrin, an insecticide that kills ticks on contact. Buy a tick repellent and a tick remover. They're available in outdoor shops, vets or online. And keep them handy in your first aid kit, bag or car. While you're out, use the tick repellent before you go on your walk and carry the tick removal tool. It's amazing how many people forget. It's also useful to carry your phone. It can be used as a magnifying glass for seeing small ticks. And wear light coloured clothing because it helps you see ticks more easily. Don't expose bare skin. Wear long sleeves and long trousers tucked into your socks and keep to well-maintained paths. Avoid walking in long grass, leaf litter or touching foliage. And check your clothing for ticks as you go. After you get back, do a tick check and have a shower. Be careful of the back of the knees, the groin, behind the ears, the hairline and other places where small ticks are hard to spot. There are many tick repellents on the market, but the ones containing 20% saltidin or acaridin are effective against ticks for longer. These include Autan Protection Plus, Pyramid Trek, Midge and Tick or Sensitive and Smidge. You can find them in many outdoor shops or online. There are other repellents containing DEET, IR3535, Citriodiol and Citronella, which also work, but they may have to be applied more often. You should also use a tick preventative on your pet. Some flea treatments also kill or repel ticks. Make sure you choose a vet recommended product that is safe for all the animals in your household. Avoid walking in long grass and stick to paths. Check your animals for ticks daily. Remove ticks quickly using a tick removal tool. The most common place to find ticks on them are on their head, ears, legs, armpits and tummy. 
Talk to your vet about a canine Lyme vaccine. And mice and foxes are common tick carriers, meaning pets in urban areas are at risk as well as those in rural areas. Before you remove a tick, take a picture of it so you can show it to your GP if you need to later. Remove it as carefully and quickly as possible because the longer it's attached, the greater the risk of infection. Either use a plastic tick removal device, a card remover or tick twister, and follow the instructions on the packet. Or use specialist fine pointed tick removal tweezers, hold them parallel to the skin and lift the tick off. Don't use normal tweezers because they don't have a fine enough point. It's important not to squeeze the body of the tick as you remove it. And don't cover it with gels, oils or liquids or burn it because these can increase the risk of infection. Clean the area with antiseptic or soap and water, then kill the tick by dropping it into alcohol. Again, don't squeeze or burn it because some rare infections carried by ticks can be transmitted this way. Keep your tick in a bag in the freezer in case you need to get it tested later. Plastic tick twister devices are available online and in many vets. They come with two or three hooks in the packet. Choose the most suitable hook according to the size of the tick. Engage the hook by approaching the tick from the side until it's held. Lift the hook very slightly and turn it. The tick detaches by itself after two or three rotations. Then disinfect the bite area with an antiseptic. If using tweezers, use only specialist fine pointed tick removal tweezers. Gently pull back any hair from around the tick and expose the skin. Locate the head of the tick, grasp it as close to the skin as possible and gently squeeze. Don't grab the tick's body as this can increase the chance of injecting the tick's saliva into the bloodstream and increase the risk of infection. Pull outwards in a straight motion until the pressure pulls out the head of the tick. Don't twist or wiggle the tick as it may tear the head off and leave it lodged in your skin. If you've been bitten by a tick, you should watch out for symptoms. The initial symptoms of Lyme disease occur 3 to 30 days after the bite and may include a red expanding rash, flu-like symptoms, fatigue, headache, nausea and muscle and joint pain. The bite is generally painless and doesn't itch so it's often not noticed. If an expanding rash develops, take a picture of it and tell your GP you've been bitten by a tick. But not everybody gets a rash. The rash is often described as a bullseye but there are many variations. Ticks can transmit multiple infections, not just Lyme disease. So if you're ill in any way after a bite, then talk to your GP. The Lyme disease rash is known as an erythema migrans rash. It appears three to 30 days after the tick bite and is not usually itchy or painful. It's sometimes mistaken for ringworm or cellulitis. Around 50% of patients don't see a rash. But when it is seen, it's diagnostic. If you get a rash like that, you have Lyme disease. It's often described as a bullseye rash. The rash doesn't have to be so obvious. They're often faint or ill-defined, and they're not always at the site of the bite. Rashes also vary in size and shape. They can be anything from two inches across to across your whole back, and they can be circular or irregular, and sometimes there are multiple rashes. Lyme disease can be hard to diagnose. Tick bites are easily missed because ticks are small and the bites are not normally itchy or painful. Many people will not get the classic bullseye rash and the initial symptoms can be vague. A blood test cannot be used to rule out Lyme disease and so the diagnosis is often clinical. The Royal College of GPs has a Lyme disease course and toolkit you can tell your GP about. Early treatment is key for dealing with Lyme disease. If symptoms are allowed to develop, then treatment is much more difficult. Treatment should be started immediately if a bullseye rash is present. It's important to treat quickly and not wait for testing. Your GP will be able to advise you on the best antibiotics for you. Doxycycline is commonly prescribed to adults and amoxicillin to children. 
NICE recommend treatment for three to six weeks for early disease, but there's no recommendation for chronic illness. The Royal College of GPs Lyme disease course states that antibiotics should be repeated until all symptoms cease. Chronic Lyme disease occurs if early treatment is missed. And even for those who are treated, 10 to 20% go on to develop chronic symptoms. Don't let ticks stop you enjoying the outdoors, but make sure you protect yourself. Prepare before you go, protect while you're out, and check for ticks when you come indoors. And make sure you have fun while you're outside. Lyme Resource Centre has more information. We support both patients with tick-borne illnesses and their doctors. We provide education for the public, outdoor organisations and healthcare professionals, including educational and awareness materials, web resources and training sessions. We run conferences for healthcare professionals, vets and researchers to further understanding of tick-borne diseases. And we work with others to research ways to combat tick-borne illnesses. You can find us on our website at www www.limeresourcecentre.com and on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. If you found this presentation useful, you can donate at www.limeresourcecentre.com slash donate. There are other sources of information, including the NHS and other charities and patient groups. <laughs>